Before we start this video, make sure you like, comment and share, subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to see more videos like this and make sure you follow me on all my socials. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Dr. Pasha Mukherjee. I hope you're all well. This video is part of my mental health series on suicide prevention and suicide awareness. So this video is called 10 signs of deteriorating mental health condition. Okay, or 10 signs of suicidal ideation or 10 signs of worsening depression, whatever you like to call it. Let's get started. So number one, known depression, manic depression, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, any of these conditions, if you, if you know a person has these conditions and you see a change in their behavior, a change in their overall condition, a deterioration, that's usually a sign. Now, all of these problems that I'll be talking about are a sign as well as a risk factor. They sort of feed into the problem, okay? So, number two, social withdrawal. Notice if a person is refusing to come to social gatherings, refusing to sit next to people at work or sit by themselves um, at the canteen, um, you know, socially withdrawing themselves, if they used to keep in touch with you or other people through social media or telephone, are they stopping doing that? Are they deleting their social media? Um, you know, through COVID-19, a lot of people have kept in touch through just Zoom calls. Is this person suddenly not doing that anymore? Social withdrawal. Number three, anhedonia. And this problem is slightly linked with the social withdrawal. So anhedonia means inability to enjoy things that you previously used to enjoy and humans are social beings so a lot of the things that we enjoy are social activities like you know um going out to eat going out uh, to the gym going out to parties going out to do any sporting activities these are all part of people's hobbies and also a way of socializing so in a way these are both linked um notice if a person you know stopped a hobby recently or, um, you know, is not continuing with a passion that they used to previously have. Number four, sleep. I understand that sleep, um, it's a bit difficult to know how well someone's sleeping. And there are plenty of different factors that can affect people's sleep. Um, I think it's particularly easier to notice how someone's sleeping if you're their partner and you sleep next to them. So yes, if you are a partner to a person who is maybe not sleeping so well through the night, they keep tossing and turning, maybe they get up and go for a walk, maybe they're waking up two hours or three hours earlier than they're normally supposed to get up at. Um, getting up two hours before the time that you should be is a, is a classic sign of depression, okay? So notice their sleep. If you're an outsider and you don't know about a person's sleeping patterns, notice if they've got red eyes, droopy eyes, sleepy eyes, puffy eyes, you know, dark circles around the eyes and things like that. Just notice that, you know, you know the general um, look of fatigue, you know. If they're falling asleep at work, for instance, these are all signs that a person's not sleeping too well at home. Um, and this feeds into number five, fatigue. Person going through a um, deteriorated mental health condition, especially suicidal ideation, is going to seem more tired. Okay, as I said, the signs of the eyes is a classic sign. Also, how well are they, you know, coping at work? You know, usually people who are very fatigued, they will find it hard to focus, find it hard to concentrate. They will struggle with general everyday things. You might notice a change in their personality. Maybe they're just not talking so much. They're just, just being a bit bleh, you know. Um, so they will not act themselves as well. So that's that's actually something that kind of encompasses everything with these signs we're talking about, that this person's going to not really look or act like themselves. Okay. Um, and as I said, this sleep, fatigue, anhedonia, and social withdrawal, they're a sign as well as a risk factor to actual, um, you know, worsening mental health conditions. So a person's going to just get spiral out of control if they continue with this sort of behavioral pattern um and it actually these 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 behavioral patterns facilitate worsening of mental health conditions okay number six crying so remember what i said about eyes and noticing you know 
the eyes, you'll notice if a person's been crying more. Again, red eyes, puffy eyes. Something else in women you might notice is that they'll stop wearing mascara or they'll stop wearing makeup because I guess they've been crying so much that they stop bothering with that. Okay, so notice that they've been crying or a lot. If you hear them crying in the bathroom, if you see them sort of look like they're about to tear up at all, um, classic signs would be, you know, glassy eyes and um, where they look like they're, they've just been crying or they are about to cry, um, you know, a hoarse throat. We know, we know what we're talking about. Number seven, so playing into this concept of women not wearing makeup when they're going through depression, appearance as a whole is something we should be assessing in a pe pe person we think might be going through depression. And again, this is not a way to uh, stigmatize people going through mental health problems. It's not a way to um, you know, draw conclusions about a person without knowing them. Remember, we, we mustn't draw conclusions before actually communicating with the person, but all these things help us understand mental health better and therefore we can help the person, okay? We can even start a conversation with the person. So we're not talking about judging a person on their appearance, but notice a change in this person's appearance. Not a long-standing thing. If someone's always been a bit uh, scruffy, then this is not really a sign. But if someone has previously been well-kept and they now look like, you know, if, if they're a man, they're not shaving their beard or their facial hair on purpose, it looks scruffy, you know? Um, if they're not really washing their hair, they look a bit, they smell a bit, maybe their hair looks greasy, maybe they haven't gone for a haircut for a while. What are clothes are they wearing? Are there stains on the clothes? Um, are they a bit loose fitting? And, um, you know, are they sort of uh, not really carrying themselves very well? You know, the shirt's not buttoned properly, maybe they've forgotten the tie, maybe they're wearing like darker colours. Um, and they're just sort of like a bit sloppy in their appearance, they're just walking and carrying themselves not with pride. Okay, so appearance, appearance and gait and everything, okay? Number eight, as I said, if they're wearing loose fitting clothes. Now clothes, we don't necessarily always buy loose fitting clothes, but loose fitting clothes can be a sign that this person has lost some weight and that is directly linked with their diet. So depression classically results in people eating less. Okay, so again, this is something that uh, um, is difficult to notice unless you're really, really noticing. So weight loss is a good way, if you don't really know this person well enough, weight loss is a good way to see um, if they're not eating well enough. Number two could be, you could be seeing that they're not attending social gatherings where eating is involved or they want to eat by themselves and they're skipping their meals. If you're a person living with a person who is classically showing dietary changes, then you'll notice that maybe they, they just fiddle with their food a lot or they just bin a lot of their food or they might not come out of their room for meal times. they choose to eat food by themselves, okay? But also it can be, for some people, it could be overeating as well. So that is also a sign. Uh, number nine, number nine is alcohol and drugs, okay? What did we say about noticing a person's appearance as a whole? Let's think about how can we notice signs of a person becoming more alcohol dependent or more dependent on drugs. Um, and as I said, alcohol and drugs are facilitators of impulse, impulse, impulsive decisions like suicide ideation and self-harm. Okay, so you should be able to uh, maybe notice this person is a little bit more drowsy, a little bit more drunk, maybe they're hungover, maybe they're smelling of alcohol. Um, you know, um, and if you're living with them, are they having more than they usually do? So you'll notice these things, okay? Number 10. Number 10 is communication, okay? A person will communicate with you, whether verbally or through their social media, what they're going through at some point. A lot of people are not very good at keeping everything in for the whole time that they're going through it. So listen to what they're saying. Look at what they're portraying on their social media. See what they're trying to communicate to the world, okay? This means, what are the kind of posts that they're posting on social media? Are they reposting a lot of quotes, a lot of sad quotes, maybe a lot of sad songs? Maybe they're posting some random pictures. Maybe they're going off social media, they've switched off their social media, or maybe they're doing too much of social media. Uh, maybe they're erratically posting on social media. So that's a communication through social media that you can look at. And also, if they are close enough to you, maybe they will divulge to you sometimes that they're not feeling okay. 
you know look at the language they use is a lot of negative talk that they're talking you know it's a lot of uh, you know be very careful if someone's using a lot of language like oh, i don't want to live anymore i can't take this anymore i can't do this anymore i just want to give up i just want to go away somewhere i just want to run away somewhere escapist conversation so listen to what they're talking about and how they verbalize this how they communicate this with you What's their tone of voice? Is, it, is, it, is there a lot of despair in their voice? Humans are very good communicators and we're very good at picking up communication cues. Remember that only 7% of communication is actual spoken words. A lot else of it is actually body language, tone of voice and everything else. So take all this into account into understanding a person and their mental health. And as a bonus, I'd like to add, this is not something that others can often see. But sometimes you might see this and this is a good time to ask them. And this last sign, this bonus sign, is time to get help, okay? And I'll talk about getting help in a second. But the last sign, the bonus sign, is signs of self-harm. If you see cuts, recurrent cuts on their arms, especially people cut on their arms, over here on the inside, on the outside, on their thighs. If they really don't want to see you to see it, they'll do it in their tummy or somewhere else look out for signs of, uh, of self-harm okay but as I say going back to the point if you're at this point if you've seen all these signs and you're having this conversation with the person you're noticing these signs you need to ask them to get a professional involved tell them to seek professional help and if you don't trust them to do that you do it there are helplines that you can reach out to you can call 111 and 999 to address this problem. Yes, it might not be an immediate emergency, but uh, it's still something that uh, that is still taking a step. Or make someone else aware of this. Make someone else that you trust. If you're a child at school or a student at school, tell 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 your supervisor or teacher or tell this person's parent, not in a gossipy telltale way, but um, in a caring way, from a caring perspective, okay? So, um, yes, I hope this helps all of you to understand some of the signs of depression and deteriorating mental health. Please help if you can. Yes, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.